Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television Live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babli Jonathan. In our top stories, despite the efforts of the Cameroon government and calls for dialogue and a ceasefire from within and without, the situation has continued deepening in the two anglophone regions of the country. In this newscast, we shall bring to you latest news streaming in from the northwest and southwest regions of the country. We shall equally take you to Batibu in the Northwest region of the country, one of the localities highly affected by the crisis. We shall show you how life has taken a bitter twist in Batibu, like elsewhere in the two Anglophone regions of the country. And in sports, the last hope of the African continent, Senegal, booted out of the ongoing 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. The Teranga Lions of Senegal lost in their last encounter against Colombia, zero goal to one. That was earlier today. Those were top stories. We begin this newscast with latest news streaming in from the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon hit by socio-political and security crisis for more than two years now. Facts and figures streaming in from the northwest and southwest regions indicate that the situation has continued deepening. Details in this report. Bullets continue killing. Fire continues raging. Circulation and other activities paralyzed in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon. The last gun battle left several police officers and a separatist fighter killed in Wedicum in the northwest region. And since the deadly confrontation, the Baminda Mamfe Road has remained blocked. It has spilled into the West region again. Armed civilians exchange bullets with security and defense forces in Babaju in the Bambutus division. In Muyuka in the Southwest region, a branch office of Elections Cameroon has been reduced into ashes. In the report coming up, Staff Lady Mimi Mefo takes us to Batibu in the Momo Division Northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. It is one of the localities highly affected by the Anglophone crisis. It should be recalled that two government officials have so far been kidnapped in the same locality. The Divisional Officer of Batibu as well as the Northwest Regional Delegate of Social Affairs and Life has taken a bitter choice in Batibu as it is the case elsewhere in the two Anglophone regions of the country. Mimi Mefo. Batibo is one of the subdivisions in Momo. It is located 40 kilometers from Bamenda and about 100 miles east of Nigeria. It is also situated along the Bamenda Manfi Highway and known as the economic, social, political, and cultural heartbeat of the Mogamo speaking people. This is the area where two administrators have in two weeks been picked up by unknown armed individuals and taken to an undisclosed destination. In Batibo, life has not been the same again for the population since the kidnapping of the divisional officer for the set locality on the 11th of February and the escalation of the Anglophone crisis. During a tour through the neighborhoods, doors were closed even in the afternoon and the streets were empty. Only few persons could be spotted. The wrong goal, the wrong goal, see what I think they started out with the tip, uh, they can't take D for fee for uh, 11 February. Since that day, they take us so people, the Zandam, they be there for your army, then they be there for you. So all picking, they run them. Now all of you, she don't, so she don't, so we're not doing it. This grandmother explains that her son fled the village for safety. She and other locals further recounted how their economic and social activities have crumbled as a result of the prevailing situation. You should not, you know the chop flop, you, you, you know if you be steady for place, you want to do something. You should do wrong, you should do wrong, you know what you have, you must fear. 
So I day for you have no way for me to manage life, sir. Just day. We know day we would go buy tea for the ghost time for chop. We we'll begin there. And how we would day me and my banya, we must around die. You know, gay brother and sister. Now only we, we, we will take compa. A palava money, you know, the gay with money. They are the only multiple based residents who accepted to talk to Equinox TV's team of reporters. Their desire is for the return to normalcy in the area and in the entire northwest region of Cameroon. To the administrators, the tension would have been minimized if the population worked in close collaboration with forces of law and order. They refer how would they there? They name many people they they come there you should shoot that gun they want to shoot shoot and so they say they don't want to see uh, the boy picking. No do her. They gave for wrong. If now you, you see go on they should show show you should run. As they they told they say they want a man picking there. Come for some mummy way there for us we it passed me said some small money will be put up for for basket for move and buy thing that they move them. But the few in this part of the north region of Cameroon is general. In the meantime, contributions are ongoing in view of meeting the more than 12 billion francs CFA emergency humanitarian aid put in place by the government of the Republic of Cameroon to assist thousands of persons who have been displaced in the two anglophone regions of the country and those who are now seeking refuge in neighboring Nigeria, many of them living in very deplorable and even precarious conditions and a sum of 120 million 100,000 francs CAV has been contributed by elite in Ebolua South region of the Republic of Cameroon for that purpose. Now we take you to the Mongo Division littoral region of the country precisely in the loom where an accident has left two persons dead and a report streaming in indicates that heavy iron bars that were being transported from the littoral region to the west region of the country fell off a truck and crushed three persons and two of the victims have died franklin mwabe reports It was about 10 p.m. when this heavy-duty truck transporting scrap metal from Douala heading to the west region was asked to stop for checkup by the police officer in Loom, but he refused to do so. A few meters away from the temporary checkpoint, the unbridled scrap metal cut loose and fell on a commercial motorbike having on board two women and a rider. All of a sudden, we heard a loud sound. A truck transporting iron bars had fallen on two women and a man on board a motorbike. One man, two women. One person died on the spot and another later died at the Njombe District Hospital. The truck driver and his assistant disappeared into thin air. Witnesses condemned the fact that the rusted iron bars were not tied. They added that the gravity of the incident would have been worse if it happened during the day considering the busy nature of the stretch of road coupled with unauthorized business activities, loading and offloading of vehicles that take place here. The incident further highlights the absence of a motor park in Loom and the proliferation of selling spots and shops at this junction and other roads linking Loom to Douala, Nkongsamba and Tombel, especially during these holidays. Members of Cameroon's lower house of parliament are currently examining the bill on the extension of their mandates for one year. The bill was tabled in parliament yesterday. Innocent as files in details. Members of parliament will now have to warm their seats at the National Assembly for another 12 months. This follows the head of state's decision as a result of the social political crisis plaguing the country. 
defending the prolongation of these mandates, government cites Article 15, Section 4 of the Constitution of 18th January 1996, which stipulates that in case of a severe crisis, the President of the Republic can, after consultation of the Constitutional Council, chambers of the lower and upper houses demand for the National Assembly to, by a law, take a decision to prolong their mandates and vice versa. The MPs are now mobilizing themselves to serve for another one year. This comes after the mandate extension bill was tabled on parliamentary tables at the National Assembly for scrutiny and adoption. Trade unionists in the Republic of Cameroon has attributed the recurrent strike actions in companies across the Republic of Cameroon to what they consider as lack of political will, referring to failure by company managers to implement national and international uh, labor laws. They were speaking here in the economic capital Dwala yesterday on the sidelines of an awareness and sensitization workshop organized by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security to uh, boost the implementation of conventions of the international labor organization signed and ratified by Cameroon. The workshop ended today. Coming up, talking point, or rather before talking point, we take the smart side of the workshop. Thanks for joining us on the smart side of the ongoing 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. Smanji Kangebe, we're going to start with this sad news for the African continent. The last hope of the continent, the Teranga Lions of Senegal, have been booted out of the competition by Colombia after they suffered a 0-1 to one defeat today. Yes, Babila, good evening. And of course, it is uh, another sad day. Finally, finally, maybe what many people have been saying, FIFA, football is not meant for Africa. Maybe certainly that adage is moving because if you look at the abbreviation of FIFA, it seems football is not meant for Africa. But we know Africans do have soccer and they have soccer players, those who can play the football. Now, Senegal this afternoon was the last hope for uh, the African continents owing to the fact that they started their game well. First, they had a penalty appeal in the course of that match. And of course, we had the video assistants uh, who was also there to check. At the end of the day, nothing. Then we have the outing of Rames or James or Rodriguez, one of the top players of Colombia who went out limping during the first segment of the game. Then came in another player, and of course, the goal for Senegal that was scored by Mina that was late in the uh, second half of that encounter that uh, Jerry Mina scored that goal after a wonderful cross from uh, the uh, the counterpart that it was a corner kick and Jeremina headed in home that goal the only goal that actually made Senegal to be eliminated and it was a, a jubilation it was total jubilation for the Colombians uh, who were hoping and they finally celebrated that at the end of the day they were going home with the one a goal to zero victory Smanjik and Gabriel there has been a general outcry concerning that particular penalty that they refuse or uh, the referee refused to award to uh, Senegal well a general outcry you might say remember is the same cry that came up when Nigeria was taking on Argentina many people thought they was going to have a penalty for the super egos that did not come after he went to uh, review everything on the video assistance and of course it's the same thing that happened today the video assistance referee also was there for them to see what actually went wrong but many people are asking question why is it that senegal that uh, occupied the third spot with four points and zero goal difference were eliminated from the tournament the answer is this the yellow card that was given to uh, one of Senegal's players is uh, the man in uh, uh, is Mbai Yang, the striker of Senegal. That yellow card caused or brought confusion in the ranks of Senegal because if Senegal wouldn't have picked up that yellow card, then we might have seen a situation where they might have qualified. But that yellow card uh, made it impossible for them. Now, and, just and, and despite all these explanations, uh, there are many uh, as a result of uh, frustration who see all of this as uh, you know being unfair to the African continent. And some have even gone as far as saying that uh, Africa should stop taking part in the World Cup. Well, it is 
FIFA and FIFA has always been promoting fair play but just wants to know that this yellow card was the seat for Senegal and Japan had uh, four that is what actually removed uh, Senegal from this uh, World Cup if not of this yellow card then uh, Senegal would have managed to uh, continue their race in uh, the World Cups but unfortunately they are gone so we are going to watch the World Cup continue to follow up uh, how things are moving up in, in Russia without an, Af an African continent. So all five, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, Nigeria, Senegal now, whom? So they will be watching the, the tournament from their televisions back at home. All right, Japan against Poland. Japan against Poland. It was an honor for Poland, but it was a very tough game too. It was well disputed between Japan, the Samurais of Japan, and Polish side. At the end of the day, Poland, who had not uh, succeeded in picking up any points in the course of uh, these uh, encounters that have been playing during the group stages, they scored one goal, and the one goal stayed right up to the end of the game. So Poland beat Japan by one goal to zero, and of course that's we're going to see how Poland jubilated because at least they were heading back home with three points after having this uh, disappointing results during the first two encounters. Now, after that, the two matches in Group H, this is how the table looks like uh, in the that classification group table yeah, in the group classification H. table of group H. That is for us to see the classification table thanks to the victory of Colombia. Colombia went top with six points. Japan four points, just like Senegal. But as I told you, so many yellow cards for Senegal pushed them out of the competition. Poland ended at the third, fourth place with three points. So it is all over for all African countries. We are now hoping to see what is going to happen after the elimination of defending champions germany yesterday and just for us to know that uh, uh, babila another african team will be playing this evening but again it's just for honors as we know so well it's just for honors so tunisia will be taking on panama this evening and the picture we got for you this evening is the head coach of tunisia who is none other than N nabil malul who himself was acting in the place of a goalkeeper because all the two reserve goalkeepers that he ha he's having all of them are injured so this evening tunisia will go to the pitch with one goalkeeper so if anything happens to the goalkeeper of tunisia this evening then let's forget maybe we don't know if it is a coach and okay. i want to tell you tunisia actually applied to egypt uh, to fifa for them to give them especially some specific uh you know special uh, uh how can i put it a special order you know for them to get a foot uh goalkeeper but fifa refused remember the, the match is just for honor that is why you see uh, nabil uh, malul himself being the goalkeeper in their training session this evening now right england and belgium head to head england belgium is the other match i'll be having this evening head to head it is a match that nobody want to talk about now we have head to head all internationals included england belgium you might see england has beaten belgium on 15 occasions belgium managed just two wins against england and four draws uh among the two of them so this evening we are going to have a crunch encounter between the two now babila was telling you earlier on yesterday that the game is very very peculiar because this match this game also is going to decide the the, the 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 person who is going to be on top of that group should england pick up a yellow card then there are going to be uh, some ballot draws so let us look at the top strikers unfortunately we have bad news that romelu lukaku might not be fit after an injury he had but these are the top strikers this farm in uh, the world cup uh hurricane with five goals against four goals for uh, romelu lukaku but in terms of shot right hurricane is one a shot above romelu lukaku but just to know that these are the situation he has scored so far two penalties and one of his goals is with the head just like uh, Romelu Lukaku and 74 passes already completed by Hurricane and 69 passes already completed by Romelu Lukaku will be out and in terms of distance covered this farm uh, we have Hurricane with uh, 14,835 and 13,126 for Romelu Lukaku now World Cup diplomacy the World Cup is not on, on, only played in, on the pitch this afternoon we captured this picture particularly for our audience that is the belgian prime minister charles michel who was giving theresa may 
of UK, the T, uh, JC of Belgium. Now, the football is being played on the pitch, but back on the diplomacy table, there is football too. There is also football, yes, there is football on the diplomacy table. Now, photo uh, fixtures. Now, we have the fixtures of the last matches this evening for us to complete this evening, the fixtures. We already have the Japan, Poland, Senegal, Colombia is off. This evening, uh, very soon, in some few minutes' time, Moldova, we are at the Moldova Arena, we shall have the likes of uh, Panama to take on uh, Tunisia. At the same time, at uh, the King Grad Stadium, England versus Belgium, uh, the, that match is going to be decided. There is a decider because we are going to know who tops that group. But in the case where England picks up another yellow card for now, England, they have a total of two yellow cards and Belgium has three. So if England should pick another yellow card, then and the match ends in a draw they are going to toast or as we say they are going to make some draw for us to know who is going to top that group in at the world cup so that is the situation we we'll wrap up this uh, smart side of the world cup with the knockout stage the knockout stages the fixtures we already know them we have uruguay portugal france argentina Brazil versus Mexico, and at the other end we have uh, uh, Spain, Russia, Croatia versus Denmark, Sweden versus Switzerland, and now we are waiting. Japan is waiting for its opponent, just like Colombia that will be waiting for its opponent. Thanks, Smanji Kangebre. That was the smart side of the World Cup. Coming up next, talking point. Stay with us. I told you earlier that trade unionists in the Republic of Cameroon have attributed the numerous strike actions observed or occurring in companies across the country to failure by company managers to fully implement conventions, notably concerning uh, the uh, labor code as well, the labor code in Cameroon and conventions of the International Labor Organization. And this is why the Ministry of Labor and Social Security Securities intensifying sensitization campaigns in order to boost the implementation of national and international labor laws in order to ensure the growth of enterprises and the well-being of workers. And we are receiving an official of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. He is uh, uh, the delegate of Labor and Social Security for the Ndonga Mantung Division. It is in the northwest region of the country. Miti Tanui. Stanley, you're welcome. Thank you. Now, talking about the implementation of um, labor laws, national and international labor laws, it has been observed that uh, this is still uh, not working well, so to speak, in Cameroon, and that is why we have so many strike actions here and there in companies across the country. Yes, the implementation of these uh, ratified agreements, the international instruments, is, uh, is having a lot of issues. Firstly, we have noticed that uh, is because it is not yet known by, by so many uh, users of these uh, instruments. They don't uh, know it and they don't know how to apply it. So this is why uh, we are here to, in Douala to, 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 to work on certain aspects on how to valorize, to put into place these uh, instruments to everybody so that they can understand it. How important is it for a company manager? to ensure the implementation of not just conventions of the international labor organization as well as uh, but also uh, national labor laws how important is it for his company it is very important for him because he is a businessman in the first place and these instruments are put in place so that he should have his business strategies program his business strategies so that he should not have failures because for instance if you have a, an, an, an industrial accident you will notice that you have to spend more on the worker Rather than putting in place those uh, security measures that will prevent this industrial accident, so that day-to-day -day work will go on smoothly. Yeah, talking about uh, industrial uh, accidents and uh, uh, sicknesses at work, uh, we notice that this is a major problem in Cameroon because of non-implementation. But as you're explaining, this is very important. But what accounts, what explains the fact that managers, uh, many of them are not willing to implement these uh, labor laws? Yes, yeah, so many aspects can uh, intervene. For instance, uh, you can have a financial situation in the, in the enterprise. 
that will not be able, that will not allow the managers to pay those allowances that the, the, the workers are demanding. It can happen. Some can be that the, the internal rules and regulation is not followed even by the worker itself. So the manager will become reluctant to pay some of these advantages that the workers are demanding because they are not doing their own part of the, of the, of the deal. And the managers also will be reluctant to do their own part of the deal. Talking about the situation in your area of competence, you are the Divisional Delegate of Labor and Social Security from Donga Mantum Division in the northwest region of the country. What's uh, the situation over there? Are you receiving complaints from workers on daily basis? Yes, I'm receiving complaints from workers on daily basis. In as much as uh, Donga Mantum is uh, particular with own, its own particularities, they, they have a general problem in uh, Cameroon, which is the implementation of the law. We have noticed, we are at the Ministry of Labor, have noticed that most of them don't know the law. I bet you the, the, the labor code is one of the simplest law. The, the language is very clean to, to be understood, but they don't yet understand some technicalities. So that is why we are trying to make them understand, to bring the law closer to them. And that is, of course, why you uh, were brought together in an awareness and sensitization workshop on uh, conventions of the International Labour Organization ratified by Cameroon here in uh, Douala, and the workshop ended today. Yeah, they, they, we came here because, firstly, to, 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 to put in place these conventions to the people that are really needing it. Secondly, we came here because uh, the Minister of Labour and Social Security have thought it wise that to be able to take these conventions to the people, you must start with the labor inspectors. So they need to know the text and they know how to apply it before going to apply it down in the field. And I bet you that a lot of conventions have been signed, interesting ones. You, can, you have the convention on uh, equal remuneration, it's a very interesting one. The convention on uh, the Chapatite uh, organization, which is a most recent convention, uh, convention number 144, that the minister signed some, some months back. So it is still in progress. There are very interesting conventions that are fundamental to the workers' uh, rights. No, during this um, workshop, there were also equally trade unionists uh, and other stakeholders uh, like you, delegates coming from the southwest, uh, the northwest, as well as those from the littoral region of the country. Uh, what was the core of this uh, assembly of this meeting? Were they just explaining the laws to you so that you can go better uh, and apply it better? The international level uh, organization, I always talk about the tripartite, uh, the tripartite organ, which includes the administration, the workers, and the employers. So that is the reason why all of them have to come together. In every aspect, they must work together to ensure, that is what they call social dialogue, to ensure a decent work and to follow up the country's decent work program. So all these parties need to come together, need to come to a consensus, need to come and talk to themselves on how to apply difficulties that they have and how to go ahead, because we must go ahead. Now, Cameroonians are tired of meetings, seminars, workshops, because often than not, they yield little or no fruits. Well, it depends on the kind of seminar you're talking about. If it is a seminar to, to do any kind of a thing, then if it's strategic seminars like this, I think it's very important because you must not go to a formal uh, uh, institution to learn. There are other, there are other uh, organs that are put in place to come and empower yourself to share experiences. But, but the problem is that people are empowered every now and then in seminars, in workshops, people are educated, people are sensitized. People are uh, schooled on a lot of things, but the problem is implementation. Implementation is always not coming on the ground. Yeah, and that's why we're here, to know how to implement. You know, most of the time when you go for a seminar and you come, you don't know how to implement, it means you do not go for a seminar. Normally, a seminar is supposed to make you, to, to, to give you a, a go-ahead, to give you a way forward on any issues that you are facing. A seminar is supposed to empower you, to make you correct some errors and make you give you the next vision of the, uh, your, whatever you are doing. And during that uh, seminar which ended today, some trade unions uh, were equally taking part in the, in the workshop yeah. uh, told us that this initiative of bringing people together to sensitize them, to raise awareness on conventions like these will yield little or no fruit without a corresponding political will. 
the political will is there. Slowly but surely, they will, they, they, they will, they will see the implementation. Because this problem is also witnessed in public as well as private companies. Yeah, that's why you say it is a problem. That's why an alert has been made. So when an alert is made, resolutions will be taken. And those resolutions will be followed up not only by the government, I bet you. The trade union has a very important place to, to role to play because they are partners in social dialogue. The em trade unions of the employers and the trade unions of the workers, they are partners to the government in this issue. So it is not a one-sided thing that you think that this meeting will not heal fruit. So if all the parties, the Chicago representatives were there, they, they were there, if all the parties put in their efforts and decide that it will work, it will work. That is the first very first important step that everybody needs to understand. If you, after this meeting, the, the representative of the trade union and the representative of, or the representative of the government, the representative of the, 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 the workers association and that of the uh, employers association, they need to sit again to say, okay, after this conference, what did we learn? How do we go about it? We need to start teaching other people, going from one uh, employment avenue to another to explain this to them. We have also discovered that it is because these workers, they don't know procedures. So one of the resolutions that will be taken is that we will try to make flyers on very important aspects of labor administration and paste it at every, each and every working environment now, so that people will understand it. Now workers who are listening to us now, before we go, will be expecting to know uh, what is going to change after this uh, seminar, after this uh, workshop, as far as the uh, problems, notably uh, poor working conditions, uh, low pay, non-payment of salaries, non-respect of contract terms are concerned. Yeah, they are going to, they are going to en en enjoy a lot from it. Firstly, they will be able to know now that a seminar of this, kind of, of this uh, magnitude have taken place. So they are expecting those, part those uh, social partners to go down to the field to them and explain it to them that the importance of a contract of, an, of an employment does not only end where it's signed. It comes with a lot of obligations and a lot of rights. So the right the part of the employer and the, part employee. Of the employer and the employee. So when you are executing your contract of employment, there are certain things that you need to do. There are certain things that you need to put in for the employer to have another obligation to do his own part of the deal. Because when an environment, a working environment is not tidy, it's not decent, when you come to work, you live with injuries. That's a problem. That is a problem because the worker, the employer needs to take uh, charge of those issues. And when you come to work, you don't, be, you don't lazy around. You need to be productive. You see, it is a, a two-way thing. You need to be productive for the employer to be able to pay you because the employer needs to make money to pay you. So it's a two-way way issue. The government is there to watch, to look, and to interpret the laws for you people. Thanks very much, Miti Tanyu Stanley. You are the Divisional Delegate of Labor and Social Security for the Ndonga Mantum Division in the Northwest Region of Cameroon. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thank you very much. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for this edition of the news. Goodbye.